Well, good morning, Cornerstone family. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us this morning. We're going to do some worship. They'll be studying God's Word here. Let's join Pastor Joey and Kim. Good morning, church family. Thank you for joining us today. Let's worship our God. Let's give Him the praise. Amen. You are. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God, you do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak, you comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like you. Strength the rocks, strength the rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength the rise as we wait upon the Lord. We wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deep. us up on wings like eagles. Come on, strength the rocks. Strength the rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Let it rise. Strength the rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliver. You are, you are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. Not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like. Strong deliver, I got, I got. You reign forever. I hope, I strong deliver. You are, you are the everlasting God, the everlasting. Not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Come on, give our God a shout of praise. He's everlasting. 
He's our deliverer. He's there for you. Amen. Come on, let's worship our God. Let's put everything aside. We worship you, God. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are. We make a miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are. We make a miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every. Heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 You are. You are God who saves, He delivers us. We see that you're working, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. Yeah. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. 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 Yeah. You are making a way for us, God. Come on, lift it up with your hearts. You are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Yeah. You're working in this place, working in our homes, our relationships, God. We worship you. Come on, lift us up. Even when I don't see it, 
Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, yeah. Thank you that you're working through us now. You made a way. We believe in you, God. We believe in you. Fill this place, fill our homes, God, with your presence. Work on our hearts. Work on our minds, God. We trust in you. thousand times I fail, still your mercy remains. Should I stumble again, I'm caught in your grace. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all things. Your will, your will above all else, and my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all things. So I give you control, consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. will above all else you will above all else till my purpose remains the art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all things my heart and my soul, I give you control, consume me from the inside out, Lord, let justice and praise become my embrace, to love you from the inside out, everlasting, your light will shine when all Your glory goes beyond all fame, and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out, Lord, my soul cries out everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame, and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out, Lord, my soul cries out from the inside out, Lord, my soul cries out. Just cry from your heart everlasting, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades. 
never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame, and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out, Lord, my soul cries out from the inside out, Lord, my soul cries out. And oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be now. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever. I just cried out, running to your arms. And oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever. Yes, Father God, you reign in this place. We are running into your arms. We know that you rescue us, God. You free us, that you deliver us, that you lift us up in your arms. Thank you that we can rest in your peace, rest in your love. No matter what we may be going through, we trust in you. We know that we are wrapped around in your arms. And that you love and protect us no matter what. So, Father God, just... Be with our hearts, be with our minds, God. Restore us, renew us, God. And prepare our hearts right now for your message. Bless our pastor as, a, as he speaks. And God, I pray for every family, every heart, every brother, every sister out there. Right? You just continue to be with them. Watch over, protect them, lift them up during this time. Bring them joy and passion and love. Father, we love you. We run into your arms. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen. Thank you, Cornerstone, for joining us. Uh, we want to worship together. We want to study God's Word together. I know this has been a very difficult, struggling week for a lot of us, uh, but I am so glad to be together, worshiping together online and in person. Um, it's just good to be together. Well, we're studying the Word of God today in the book of Revelation, and we've been going through this book. Well, today we're going to be jumping into chapter 8. And, and as we do, we're to look at the judgment of God being poured out upon this planet, the seven trumpets of judgment. But in this, I want us to always keep in mind our big idea, which is this. God extends his mercy with the final countdown before he judges this world. He's always extended his mercy. For the last 2,000 years, his mercy has been extended. The judgments didn't come yesterday. It didn't come this week. He's still extending his mercy. And while it is called today, today is the day to know Christ, to know his forgiveness, his mercy, his grace. Now, I know some people will ask, well, why, why does God have to judge? Why can't he just say, okay, you had your time, now it's my time, and, and just start ruling? It's because God is a holy and righteous God. And being God and being a judge, he has to judge our sin. Now, this is what he did for us. He had Jesus, his only son, go to the cross, die in our place, take on our punishment for our sins, our shame, and our guilt, die for us, and on the third day, rose again. 
So we can accept his mercy through Jesus Christ, or we can reject that and then suffer the judgment that is coming. So as we read into uh, this book here in chapter 8, as we get into 8 and 9, the seven trumpets of judgment, I want to ask one question, and the question is this. uh, What will it take? What will it take for you and I to really turn our hearts over to the Lord? I, I know in our life there's been so many blessings that some, uh, sometimes it's a blessing that you just realize that's God, and, and God is so kind, and he's so good, and because of that, we turn our lives back to him. And then there's other times that it's because we see the depravity of everything, and then we know that we need mercy. But what will it take? Because as we start to read through the judgments here, it gets pretty serious, So let's start in chapter 8, verse 1. John reads, he writes, When he, speaking of Jesus, opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Now, that's a strange thing. Silence, if I were to just stop talking for 30 minutes, you'd all fall asleep probably after two minutes. It'd be awkward, right? Well, heaven is a a very worshipful place. There is a lot of singing. The angels are rejoicing. Every time someone gives their heart to the Lord, turns back to to the Lord, the angels are singing, they're rejoicing to have silence. Why is there silence? It's because this judgment that is coming is sobering. The reality, the finality of it all. In one commentary, he said that this is the longest that heaven has ever been silent for 30 minutes. And and I think there's another time that was even longer. When God sent his son to hang on the cross for our sins. Those last three hours on the cross as he paid for our sins and our shame and our guilt. I think heaven must have stood still. The angels must have stood still and just watched. What a sacrifice of love for us. Well, after 30 minutes of silence, John writes, that I saw seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Now, trumpets often are used to sound, this is the battle cry. Another angel who had a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. Now, a censer is a a pot with holes in it that you would put coals in it. And, And the priest, in the morning and in the evening, he would take coals, put put coals inside this pot, and then he would put incense And then he would walk in, and and those incense, as they burned, it was, uh, and and smoke started to rise, it was a symbol of our prayers uh, before God. Another angel who had the golden incense, the golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer in the prayers of the saints on the golden altar before the throne. The smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of the saints, went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Uh, So if you can picture this, the angel takes the coals from the altar This is where the saints have been praying. This is where the martyrs who have lost their lives for their faith in Christ have been saying, how long, O Lord? And God said in chapter 6, just wait a little longer. Well, now's the time. And so it's the coals from the altar that are thrown down to earth. This is the answer for our prayers. And, And I know you and I have prayed many times for justice. When we see injustice and we see horrible things in life, we pray, God, please bring justice. Well, the prayers of the saints are finally answered, and God's wrath is now 
coming on this planet. Then there's an earthquake. Just like in chapter 6, an earthquake where the judgment of God. So verse 6 we read, Then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down upon the earth. A third of the earth was burned up. A third of the trees were burned up. And all the green grass was burned up. Uh, so this first angel, a third of the earth is burned. Can you imagine what that would do to our ecological system? Do you imagine what it would do to um, our planet losing a third of vegetation? Then the second trumpet, an angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. Now, anytime you see John write like a, John, he doesn't know how to describe it. It's something that he hasn't seen before. So he says, like a huge mountain, a blaze on fire was thrown into the sea. So probably maybe a meteorite is thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood. Was uh, A third of the living creatures on the sea died. And a third of the ships were destroyed. Now, usually when we see the sea mentioned in the Bible, it's usually the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, so it's probably the Mediterranean Sea that it, it hits, but it could affect all of the seas. Our, our planet is about almost three-quarters water, right? And, and if you think about it, a third of the oceans would be um, the Atlantic Ocean. So if you'd imagine the whole Atlantic Ocean being destroyed, just imagine that. Imagine uh, the dead sea life fish. I mean, after a day or two, the stench, the judgment of God is coming. A third of the ships, I mean, when this hit the water, it, it must have created a tsunami, and so a third of the ships are destroyed. The judgment of God is coming, but I want you to also notice that a third has been destroyed that means two-thirds has been saved. There's twice as much grace here, twice as much mercy. Now the third trumpet. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of the waters. Now, this is now on the fresh water. So this seems like a compass that has a tail, right? The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. Uh, wormwood was a, a poisonous root in the first century that was used to poison uh, people, and it would make you feel drunk, and then death would ensue. Imagine a third of all of fresh water being destroyed, and, and even deep in the wells of water being destroyed, a third. Now the fourth trumpet, one-third of the celestial lights will be darkened. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light. And also a third of the night. Uh, we looked at this in chapter 6 when light was darkened. And we think about places that, like Alaska. Alaska is gorgeous. It's beautiful. But the people that live in Alaska 365 days out of the year go through depression because there's so much darkness. And many of them self-medicate. And so you see that, imagine a third of the, the sunlight, the third, a third of the night. I mean, we, we, we have these routines that we can expect a full moon, and then 
the new moon, well, then it's dark, but then, then you're going to have the crescent moon, and then eventually you're going to have a full moon again. Imagine that changing, what that would do to all of us. And a third less light, you imagine what it would do to the temperatures of this planet. It would be a radical drop in temperatures. Verse 13 as I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. Uh, so the first four trumpet blasts, the judgment is on our ecosystem. And it's devastating. But the next three trumpet blasts are going to be far greater than the first four. The next will be upon man himself. Revelation chapter 9. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. Now notice it says a star that had fallen. Not falling, but had fallen. This, I believe, is a reference to Satan, who was one of the angels who turned against God. And he's given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When, the op when he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. Uh, the sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. And out of the smoke, locusts came down upon the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. So out of this <laughs> pit of hell literally is released on our planet They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. So those whom God has put a seal of protection on, those who are followers of God, they are protected from this. But everyone who has rejected God will suffer this demonic torment Verse 5, it says, They were not given power to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. It's interesting to note that the average life is about five months for a locust, and that's the amount of time that they're given. And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes a man. During those days, Men will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. I can't imagine a more descript way of describing what eternal judgment will look like. You will seek death, but not be able to. This punishment is coming after God has already brought many to him through the witnessing of the 144,000. There are multitudes in heaven that are worshiping God at this moment because they have stood for their faith. God never wants to destroy us. He will punish us because our sin deserves punishment, but if we choose to accept our substitute, Jesus Christ, we can avoid this. You see, God doesn't enjoy the punishment of unbelievers. In fact, Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11 says this, Say to them, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn. Turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, O house of Israel? God's speaking to his people that have rejected him at this point in time. 
to saying, turn back. And this promise is for everyone. Just turn back. Well, Revelation 9 goes on describing this torment. It says, the locusts look like horses prepared for battle, these demonic beings. On their heads they, were, they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces, so they were intelligent. Their hair was like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth, so they were fierce and they were deadly. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. I, I kind of imagine, I haven't heard a lot of horses, but I've heard helicopters, kind of like that. They had tails and stings like scorpions, and in their tails they had power to torment people for five months. They had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in the Greek, Apollyon. The first woe is past. Two other woes are yet to come. Abaddon, Apollyon, uh, the definition of that is destroyer. Uh, this is the name that Jesus called Satan in John chapter 10. Jesus came to give us life, abundant life, life that has value, life that is enjoyable, but the enemy, the devil, he comes to kill and destroy. Well, now the sixth trumpet. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from the horns of the golden altar that is before God. Now, I want to pause for a moment. The golden altar, the, the horns, this was the place of mercy. This is where the sacrifice would be given and you would find mercy and forgiveness of your sins. Jesus, the Lamb of God, gave his very life so that we would have mercy. But again, if we reject his, his mercy then and soon punishment will come. Verse 14 says, It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. Euphrates. This voice is God's voice. These angels were bound for thousands of years. These are fallen angels. These are severe demonic beings. Watch what happens, verse 15. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour, this day and month and year, were released to kill a third of mankind. I know, we're getting to PG-13, right? This is terrible stuff coming. But understand, God has been what? Showing his mercy, holding back his judgment until the very hour, the very day, the year. God knew exactly when this would happen, and he's held it back for more people to come to know him. Verse 16 says, The number of the mounted troops was 200 million. I heard their number. Now, this is really interesting because as John writes this, remember, he's living in Rome. He's writing this from the island of Patmos. He's writing this to the seven churches of Asia Minor. He's writing to these churches that know Rome is the strongest earthly army in all the world, and it has about 250,000 soldiers. So to write 200 million soldiers, everybody would be thinking, John, you, you drank too much wine. That number doesn't even make sense, and it hasn't made sense for the last 2,000 years. But today, with 7.8 billion people in the world, this number is actually reality. 
Now, I believe these are demonic, another demonic force. These angels are released to lead this strong 200 army. But it is interesting to note that Euphrates is going to be a battleground. When that river is dried up, this is where Armageddon will happen. And the armies from the east. And so today we have a coalition, the Shanghai Corporation Organization, with eight members in this Russia, China, India, Pakistan, eight members that consist of 2.5 billion. Now, a rule of thumb is that you can man about 10% of your population. So they literally could man up 200 million in an army. But whether it's men from this coalition or whether it's demonic or whether it's a mix of the two, we know that judgment is coming. And God would rather us experience his mercy, his grace, rather than his judgment. It's our choice to accept or reject. Verse 17 says, The horses and riders I saw in my vision, I looked like this. They looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red and dark blue and yellow as sulfur. So he's able to describe their colors. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails, so they're able to uh, kill from both the mouths and tails. Their tails were like snakes, having heads with which they inflict injury. Revelation 7, 9 I want to go back to that. This is what we read last week. Just a reminder of this great multitude that comes out of this period of seven years of tribulation. Because I know we're seeing a third of mankind killed and destroyed, and we're thinking, it doesn't seem like God's grace and mercy is there, but we need to remember all of this fits together. And during this great tribulation, we read last week, verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 9, that after this I looked, there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, every tribe, people, and language standing before the throne in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. So a vast number will be saved, but there's also many who will reject God's grace. What's remarkable is the end of chapter 9. It says, The rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshiping demons in idols of gold, Silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. They refused to change. They refused to stop. They continued in the work of their hands, which was in defiance to God. They continued to worship these idols that were not really gods. And, and if you look over the last couple thousand years, uh, idols made out of stone and gold and silver and wood kind of gives the imagery of these demonic beings. 
God will release hell on earth in judgment because these men and women refuse God's grace, his mercy. They did not repent of their murders. They continue to hurt and injure and kill one another. Their magic acts, is, is, it's interesting, uh, this word here in the Greek is, is for sorcery, which um, in our English language, we get the word pharmacy out of it, actually. Uh, they would take drugs, and they would do these seances, and they would do these demonic worship as they would get loaded. Sexual immorality, it's the word that we use today for pornography. Distorted, perverted sexual deeds, not honoring what God says about a man and a woman, being committed to one another in a marriage, but instead throwing that aside. And we see that today. And there's no more hurt and pain that I can imagine that we can do to one another, and then that's our world that we live in. And, th and that's why we as a church, we, we support rescuing girls that are caught up in sex trafficking. But it feels like it's just at times putting a Band-Aid on this cancer that is destroying marriages, that is destroying our world. Eventually, judgment will come. It reminded me of Romans chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, which Paul writes, he says, Do you show contempt for the riches of God's kindness, his tolerance and patience, not realizing God's kindness leads you towards repentance? God has been tolerant to you and I. He has been so patient. But eventually, time will run out. I don't know what the time is. I don't know when these judgments will come, but God does. But something also to think about is, I don't know how much time I have left on this planet, and you don't know how much time you have left. Every day is a gift. God has been so kind and patient what will it take for us to turn our hearts back to God? Paul says, because of your stubbornness and your unrepented heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath when his righteous judgment will be revealed. Will you turn to him today? I don't know what it's going to take. I hope reading through the reality of the future, maybe today, that will wake up your heart, your mind, to turn your life back over to God. Don't wait another day. Today is the day of salvation. Would you pray with me? Father God, you are a righteous and holy God. And you will judge this earth. Judgment is coming. You know the hour, the day, the month, the year. And there is nothing holding that back except for you, God. And you hold back that judgment because you want more people to come to know you. God, you take no pleasure in the destruction of the wicked. That's why you've been kind and patient towards us. Lord, I pray right now that we would turn our hearts to you. That whatever sin we're holding on to, we would confess that and ask for your forgiveness and mercy. Lord, we thank you that when there was no way, you made a way. Jesus, you gave your life for us. You became our substitute on the cross. You took our sins, our shame, our guilt, and you died in our place. And then you rose again on the third day. 
we either can choose to accept you into our life as our substitute, as our atonement for our sins, the payment for our sins, or we can reject you and choose to suffer the judgment upon ourselves. I pray that every heart that is listening right now would turn to you, Jesus, and know your grace and mercy. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you that you love us. And you'd rather us be in heaven with you than suffer this terrible judgment coming. There is still mercy today. So we praise you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. If you made a decision today, please let me know. You can text me at 858-682-2424. That's 858-682-2424. Now let's worship with Pastor Joy and Kim. new hearts and new minds for your glory may your name be lifted higher and higher and higher be lifted higher and higher and higher We prepare the way, we prepare the way, we prepare the way of the Lord. We prepare the way, we prepare the way, we prepare the way of the
bless your name. Blessed be the name. Yes, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We believe in our God who saves, He heals, He's there for us. He heals us and restores us. So there's healing in the name. You believe it? Come on, sing it together, family. There's healing in the name. There's healing in the name. There's healing in the name of the Lord. You believe it? There's healing in the name. There's healing in the name. There's healing in the name of the Lord. There's power in the name. There's power in the name. There's power in the name. There's power in the name of the Lord. We believe in you, Jesus. We believe in your name that heals, that restores, that gives us new life. We believe in you. Continue to be with us, be with our families at homes. Continue to be with them every day, in their jobs, their relationships. Bring restoration upon us, our community, our church, our family, God. There's only healing in you. We believe in you. Continue to be with us. Watch or protect us. Keep us safe. We give you all the glory, all the honor, praise. In Jesus' name, all God's people say. Church family, thank you so much for joining us online today. If you feel comfortable, we are live every single Sunday, 9.15, right here in our main sanctuary. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much for your generosity. You are helping us reach more and more people for Jesus Christ. Uh, click down below. You can subscribe to us. You can give and help more people find and follow Jesus. Until next week, God bless. God bless you.